the science of tongues and Christmas lights as demonstrated with a 20 lamp set of Poundland lights. Now, these uh, lights uh, are tr currently drawing 18.2 watts. I should note this down. Uh, pen, 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 pen. There's a pen. 18.2 watts. And they're currently drawing, it's, well, actually it's 246.8 volts. That's pretty good. So it's 247 volts. And the current being drawn is 0 0.073 amps. So 73 milliamps. Okay, so the first thing, I'll unplug these and based on that, you'd expect uh, the resistance to be of the string R equals V over I. So you'd expect it's going to be 247 volts divided by 0 0.073 equals calculator. So that's uh, 247 volts. Yes, our voltage really is that high. Divided by 0 0.073 equals. So you'd expect the resistance to be 3,383 ohms. Okay, 3,383 ohms. 3.3 kilo ohms. So let's actually measure the resistance of the lights. So the value we're expecting is 3,383. The resistance we're actually getting across the string of lights is and unusually high because, uh, hold on a second, I'll just plug these in. That's better. 300 and, oh, and going down, 312 ohms. Any improvement? 310 ohms. So it's dropped down to 310 ohms. So that's a, literally, it's less than a tenth of the resistance expected. And the reason for this is that tungsten lamps have what's called a positive temperature coefficient. When they're cold, they start off with a much lower resistance than when they're hot. And if you've ever plugged your Christmas lights in and you see them sort of flash really brightly when you plug them in and then dim down to normal brightness, then that's why. The, the time a lamp is most likely to fail is when it's first turned on. Now, to give you an idea of this, I put a fuse lamp, just one of the fuse lamps, into a holder and I powered it up and on a variable voltage supply. And then I made a little graph. Well, not a graph, but a chart. And it starts off at zero volts and the resistance of the cold lamp is seven ohms. As the voltage goes up one volt, the resistance then effectively increases to 33 ohms and right up to 12 volts, which was actually above the voltage of that lamp, when it was actually, it went up to 106 ohms. So that's a huge difference. That's over 10 times, well over 10 times the original resistance. Um, so if you guys want to actually, um, uh, will I hold this up closer actually? So you can, if you want, you can uh, freeze on that if you want for a moment and uh, just uh, check out the figures. So that's... Um, <coughs> The, the inrush current uh, thing. Now, the reason... Uh, no, I'll, I'll actually cover that later. The standard string of lamps... Now, I'm not going to show a 240 volt string because it's easier to show a um, 120 volt string because it's only got 10 lamps. When the 10 lamps are in series, it's effectively 10 resistors connected in series between neutral and live. Now, in an ideal world, your mains neutral would be at near ground potential, zero volts. You can't assume it is, but in an ideal world it is. So as the voltage goes from the neutral, it goes 12, 24, 36, 48, and it just basically acts as a divider with 12 volts across each of these lamps or resistors until we get up to 120 volts. And this means when you're messing about with lamps, particularly the old screwing ones, and you're poking about, then potentially you could get a main shock off those. You can't just say, it's a 12 volt lamp, 
it's only going to be 12 volts in the socket because it isn't. When you pull a lamp out like this, you're breaking the circuit. And when you break the circuit and it breaks the resistive divider, then you'll have a chain of resistors connected to neutral, which is at zero volts, and a chain of resistors connected to live, which is at full mains voltage. In the case of this demonstration, it would be 120 volts. In the case of our 240 volt supply, it would be 240 volts. So that's actually quite useful because um, it's used in a feature in the lamps. But it's worth noting that that's, you know, something to keep in mind if you've got mains lamps and you're playing about with them. You can get an electric shock off the little fairy lights. And indeed, a friend, uh, a friend was playing about when he was a kid. He was going around the trees, screwing in the lamps, trying to make them work. And it was a string of 20 PIFCO style lamps and the wire must have been sticking out the back of the socket and he says he was just playing about trying to screw it in. He must have held the threaded section which made one connection and the wire came out the back which made the other. And he said it felt like his brother had run up behind him and kicked him in the back of the chest, a real thump across the chest. And that was a mains electric shock and be under no, no illusion about that, these lamps pass more than enough current, particularly while cold, uh, even when hot, to be honest, they pass about the uh, best part of 100 milliamps to cause death. So you should know that, you know, playing about with the wiring, uh, although they're low voltage lamps, it, it doesn't mean they're safe. Oh God, I sound like a scaremonger, don't I? Anyway, going on to the lamp construction and the thing about them being the open circuit voltage. Um, the typical Christmas light looks like this. It's, got, uh, it's made out of a section of tubular glass which is sealed off one end to pip and crimped at the other end and there's a little glass bead in the middle to support the filament. The filament is folded over, the actual the wire filament, the, sorry, the filament support goes through the glass bead for support, through the crimp and then out to the, uh, uh, out to the uh, base. And likewise there's the other connection which in this style of lamp is higher goes through the glass bead for support, through the base, and then the filament is just strung. It's actually folded round and crimped between those two connections. There's also a tiny little bit of wire wrapped round the base. Now, where the wires go through the seal, it's actually, the wire used is usually Dume metal. I think it's Dume, Dumet, Dume, I think it's Dume. And Dume wire is a alloy of, I think it's iron and nickel. Yes it is, it's nickel and iron and it's got a copper coating on it. And the reason that it's uh, that mix of metals is because where it passes through the glass, when it's crimped in, if the two materials, the metal and the glass, had different thermal coefficients of expansion, they changed their actual size with temperature, then as the glass cooled down it would cause stresses and it would cause little cracks to appear and it wouldn't be a good seal. So Dumi metal is used to provide a good thermal coefficient of expansion match with glass which means that when it's sealed in it uh, makes a nice tight seal. There's another thing that they do though, they oxidise it which is why the wire all inside always looks that sort of like uh, orangey red colour inside. I think they heat it in a oxygen gas. I'm not 100% sure how they oxidise it. But what that results in is an oxide coating that also acts as almost like a flux. It really bonds well onto the glass and provides a good seal. This is another thing though. Oxide, the oxide that coating tends to be fairly poor conductor and if you just get a fair light out and you get a low voltage lead and you dab it on, you'll often find it's quite hard to get a good connection until you really scrub it to get through the oxide coating. And that's where this little um, wire comes in. Now, do you recall earlier on I had to plug these in before it showed the correct reading? That's because one of those oxide coatings was not was creating a high resistance. And that's what happens here. This little bit of wire that's wrapped around here normally it isn't affected by the fact there's 12 volts across the lamp because when it's plugged in there's 12 volts. If the filament's intact there's 12 volts across it. And the insulation layer on the um, the oxide coating on the wire there is high enough that it, that wire doesn't have an effect, it doesn't make connection. However, when that filament breaks and it goes open circuit 
then the voltage across that rises. In the case of the UK, it rises to 240 volts across that. In the case of America, it arrives to, rises to 120. And the, that voltage is enough to break down the electrical connection there and it effectively shorts this lamp out completely. And you may have read in the instructions that when uh, the lamp fails uh, and it goes out, you should replace it immediately. The reason for that is that because it shorts out, suddenly you find that the voltage uh, across the lamps, the rest of the lamps, increases. Because, say for instance that four lamps had blown in a string. Um, so a string of 20 lamps, uh, 240 volts divided by the 20 is 12, but 240 volts divided by 20 minus the four that are shorted out, so it's divided by 16, the voltage has gone up to 15 volts, and that will result in much faster degradation of the other lamps, and it will create an avalanche effect. So you have to change the lamps as soon as they fail. And to demonstrate this, I shall plug this in. Oh, the fuse lamp, this little white lamp, doesn't have that wire. And it's also rated a slightly lower voltage in these lamps, but the same current. And the reason for that is that it's this sort of fail-safe link. If too many lamps blow and too much current is flowing in the, the rest of the lamps, hopefully this lamp will blow first and it will save the rest of the lamps. I've got another video where I deliberately blew up a string of lamps, um, and you can see what happens there. It was very messy. There was um, They went very black and sooty inside and really did blow up inside. Wasn't that spectacular, but hey, it, was a, it proved a point. Ah, interesting. Right, okay, I've got a bad connection in that string of lights, but that's okay. Hmm. Anyway. This lamp, uh, I'll turn it on, is the fuse lamp, and I'm going to deliberately blow it by turning the voltage up to about... Oh, and I've just blown it. So that's now blown, it's not drawing any current at all. And then I'm going to get an ordinary lamp and I'm going to switch the voltage back to a nice acceptable voltage. Ordinary lamp. And then I'm going to change the voltage. And that's going to be nice and bright and I'm going to ping it to accelerate its failure. Did you notice it getting brighter? I don't know if you saw that when, when I was pinging it there. So that's now failed. The reason... Um, oh, and it just made connection briefly there. Oh, the filament's loosened its con contact inside. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's that's refu that's refusing to die, that lamp. Hold on. Now it's blown. Okay. The reason the lamps get brighter, um, if you've got lamps, fairy lights, and they're swinging against um, a hard surface, the coil inside, the filament, is actually a series of coils, like that. When you bump it while it's hot, those coils will often stick together in clumps. And that makes the lamp, uh, they, they effectively short out when those coils stick together. And the way to fix that, if you've got a lot of these bright lamps, m try to change the situation so they can't get bumped. Turn the power off, ping them, um, and if you turn it on again, those coils should have separated again. We ha used to have a lot of problem with that with municipal lights. Now, so this lamp's blown, this lamp's blown, so I'm going to put the fuse lamp in, and because it's a fuse lamp, it's not got that little link across it, the lights don't light. However, the one I've just blown, that has the little link, has now shorted out with the high voltage across it and the rest of the lamps have lit. Now, let's see, is there anything else I can really cover here about the Christmas lights? Other than the fact that if you lower the lower the voltage to a string of lights like this, if you were to put a dimmer on it or you were to modify the number of lights in a string, you can actually make the lamps last a lot longer. You can also uh, remove all the lamps and you can remove the filament lamps and the bases and you can put LEDs in and put a rectifier in and a current limiter, but I've got that in another video as well. But um, that, I, th I think I've covered just about everything I could cover about the, the lamps. Yeah. Yep, that covers just about everything, I think. So I shall stop the video here.